Uh, hello, welcome back for part two. Uh, right now we're going to cover, um, we're going to just pick up where we left off and cover the topics that you were supposed to learn in grade nine. And they're just in the form of quiz questions, question and answer. As I advised toward the end of the last video, if you really want to make this into a quiz to see how well you remember um, answers to such questions, pause the video and then start it again when you think you know the answer. Okay, um, it's a great, uh, hopefully it's a little bit fun, great way for you to learn this stuff, um, but you should have already learned this stuff, but it's a great way to at least review the stuff. So um, we're going to start with fill in the blanks, and um, here we go. A blank is a pure substance that cannot be broken down by physical or chemical means. And the answer is element. Okay. A blank is a substance that can be broken down into elements by physical or chemical means. And what's that called? Okay, that's a compound. A blank, uh, sorry, molecular compounds are formed when a non-metal bonds with a or an blank. Okay. Non-metal. A non-metal. So a non-metal bonds with a non-metal, you have molecular compounds and they form what are called covalent bonds. Blank electrons are those found in an atom's outermost energy level. And what are those called? Okay, those are valence electrons. A blank is an atom that has lost or gained valence electrons. Lost or gained valence electrons. That's an ion. All right. Okay, let's see if you can answer the following. What are the major subatomic particles? You know, we're not looking for quirks, we're not looking for quarks, we're not looking for bosons or muons or any of that funny business, but the major ones you're supposed to know in grade 9. Well, they're called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Comment on the location, charge, and relevant, relative size of an electron in an atom. In other words, what is the location, charge, and relative size? Well, it's outside the nucleus. That's one thing. That's the location. It has a charge of minus one. And it is the smallest of the major subatomic particles. Okay, answer the following. Comment on the location charge and relative size of a proton in an atom? Well, it's part of the nucleus, it has a charge of plus one, and it's one of the largest of the subatomic particles, same size as neutrons. And of course, lastly, neutrons it's part of the nucleus, it has a charge of zero, and it's the same size as a proton. Both protons and neutrons are larger than electrons. So you might want to refer to a periodic table for this. Uh, maybe look look this up in a in a reference, or let's say on the web. You know, there's plenty of there's a lot. If you Google periodic tables on the web, uh, you're bound to find something. But just take a look, really, at um, the um, chemical symbol here and the chemical information displayed. This would be a, a square out of one part of a periodic table for this one element. 
So, um, and there are specific locations for various pieces of information uh, on an element such as beryllium. So, um, let's see if we can answer the following questions. What's its symbol? What is a symbol for beryllium? Now, this this is asking you to just look at um, something from a periodic table and retrieve information such as the chemical symbol for beryllium. Well, that's BE. That's the BE part right here. Okay. What is the name of the group that it belongs to? Now, that one you're going to have to know. Um, the periodic table may not um, give you that direct information, or it may. We say that it belongs to the alkaline earth metals. Uh, I believe it's 2A on your group 2A on your periodic table. What is the number of protons? How many protons does beryllium have? This is something you should know right away. Well, it has four protons, and that's because the atomic number is four. What's the number of electrons then? Well, it ought to be four because it, you know for a periodic table you assume a neutral charge and what's the atomic number well that's also four and if the mass number is nine which it is how many neutrons does it have well that's nine minus four which is five <coughs> Now, remember I said earlier that you had to know the difference between physical and chemical properties. So, you're gonna, I'm going to give you a statement, and you're going to tell me whether this statement is of a physical property or of a chemical property. Okay. Pale yellow gas at room temperature. Okay, that's physical. Now, if it's physical, is this a qualitative statement or is it quantitative? This is also something you had to know, too. If I say something is a pale yellow gas at room temperature, am I saying something that is quantitative or is it qualitative? And the answer to that is qualitative. It can burn or etch glass permanently. Okay, that's chemical. And uh, it has a density of 1.695 grams per liter. Well, that's definitely a physical property. And is that qualitative or quantitative? Well, this one is quantitative. It explodes when it reacts with water. Well, an explosion is a dead giveaway for a chemical reaction. You can't get more chemical than that. Okay, a Bohr-Rutherford diagram. All right, so here we have two Bohr-Rutherford diagrams uh, of two different uh, elements. And uh, notice that it seems to be illustrating how one element gives up an electron um, to fill out the octet of another element. So, for one thing, identify the atom on the left. That's the uh, element here. Uh, identify that element. Well, if you look at um, a periodic table, you're going to need a periodic table for this. So, you might want to get it look it up, maybe pause the video while you go get your periodic table and uh, let's see if you can identify the atom on the left. All right, the answer is sodium. Sodium is element 19, 19 protons, 20 neutrons. It has, a, uh, has an atomic mass of 39. All right, um, actually that should be potassium. Potassium has a 
I think that's a typo. I believe that's potassium. Um, identify the atom on the right. Okay, the atom on the right is, um, uh, well, it's got 17 protons. It's got 17 protons, uh, meaning atomic number 17, and so it's chlorine. Um, okay. Is the compound ionic or molecular? Well, this relies on your knowledge of the relative positions of these in the periodic table. Is this compound an ionic compound? KCl. Actually, it wouldn't matter if it was sodium. Like if we even went with sodium, as it says on the slide, um, even that wouldn't change this last answer. Um, if we say sodium chloride, is this compound ionic or molecular? Well, sodium chloride is as ionic as it gets. So is potassium chloride. Uh, and that is because we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal, and that normally gives you an ionic compound. Conservation of mass. So here we have these blue and yellow balls. So we have, here we have uh, presumably a compound with one blue ball and two yellow balls bonded together. Another one with one blue ball and two yellow balls bonded together. But on this side of the arrow, we have one blue ball and one yellow ball and another blue ball and another yellow ball. So just look at that for a minute and ask, ask yourself, is this equation balanced? Is it balanced? Well, clearly, <clears throat> clearly the yellow balls don't seem to be balanced. We got um, we got four of them on the products, or sorry, on the reactant side, and only two on the product side. We also notice that the blue balls tend to be two on the reactant side and two on the product side. The blue balls tend to be balanced, but the yellow balls are not balanced at all. So no, we can't say that the equation is balanced. And what's missing from which side? What's missing from which side? Well, it's the yellow balls that are missing from uh, the products. Okay, and uh, that, that image was actually taken from a um, uh, textbook uh, from grade 10. So now let's talk about density. Here we have three metals and they have three different densities in measured in grams per centimeter cubed. So one of these metals has a mass of 10 grams and a volume of 1.12 centimeters cubed. Determine the, determine the identity and atomic number of the metal. Show all your work. So in this case you're supposed to take a, a mass and a volume and find its density. All right, so density is equal to mass over volume. So you take your 10 grams divided by 1.12. So, um, and that becomes 8.93. Well, if you look at the table, the closest metal to 8.93 is aluminum at 8.9, which you're also supposed to use, be able to effectively use estimation and rounding in finding your answers. Conclusion, this is closest to aluminum, atomic number 13. All right, so I hope you're having fun. That was the uh, summary for grade 9. And in the next video, we're going to talk about grade 10 topics.